Hello, welcome to today's webinar. We are coming to you live from Socrata headquarters in Seattle, Washington. My name is Alita Moore and I am a content strategist here at Socrata. Our webinar today is called Financial Transparency Apps, Helping Citizens Understand Government Finances. We will be talking to Hudson Hollister, the Executive Director of the Data Transparency Coalition, about the nationwide trend toward making government financial data available to citizens and easy to understand. Our host for the webinar today is Ian Kalin, Socrata Director of Open Data. He will be introducing Hudson and getting the conversation started. We will also be joined by Clint Tseng, Socrata Product Lead, who will take us through a live demonstration of the Socrata Open Budget app. Please remember that you can send us questions during this webinar via our webinars at Socrata.com email address or the comment block box below the video. Thank you for joining us today and here is your host, Ian Kalen. Alita, thank you so much and thanks everyone for joining uh, this webinar. Uh, it is an honor to be joined by two brilliant people. Uh, we have, as Alita mentioned, uh, Hudson Hollister, Executive Director of the Data Transparency Coalition. And we also have Clint Sang, a product lead uh, with Socrata. We have a few different uh, geographies represented here. Uh, Clint's in Seattle. Of course, Hudson uh, is leading the front in Washington, D.C., and I'm dialing in here from, from San Francisco. Uh, so we do our best to uh, really uh, bring in all of you from uh, throughout the country. We have a, have a fantastic representation of folks signed into this webinar. We really encourage you to ask questions throughout this entire conversation. So to tee things up, I just want to set expectations about what exactly we're going to do here. So uh, in the next uh, half hour or so, we are going to try to accomplish three things. First, we're going to discuss the importance of true financial transparency. Uh, we're going to demonstrate the ease of some of the applications that are helping people to accomplish their goals in this area. And finally, we're going to showcase a really exciting sleek user experience designed with a citizen in mind to actually accomplish these goals. So before I, I, I turn it over to Hudson for a bit of an introduction and context, I'd like to set the stage in terms of what exactly we're talking about here. So uh, within Socrata, of course, as we uh, power and fuel the open data platforms for a number of governments throughout the world, we have a lot of data on our data. And we're able to see which are the most popular data sets, which are the most interesting uh, use cases that uh, people can find when they engage with governments in a modern, technologically driven way. And the funny thing about money is that it's always in the top ten. Anything with a dollar sign is usually, almost always, in the, even at the top ten, it's in the top three of uh, data sets that people like to engage with. And it's interesting for us to watch that because I think any budget is a reflection of the government's values. The way you spend your, your resources is what the, the people care about. And so as a result of that, there are disagreements about what's important. There is debates about how money should be spent in the long term. Do you take care of the problems now or can you invest in the future? And so as part of this global wave, it's really a fantastic time to talk about the financial transparency activities that are changing now. There's a, there's a, a the movement taking place at all levels of government. And there happens to be some interesting news coming out of D.C. Uh, that hope to pair up uh, with some interesting innovations taking place at the, the, the state, local, and city level. Uh, so with that as context in terms of what we're here to talk about, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Hudson, and, and maybe I'll ask the first question. Uh, well, first of all, Hudson, thank you again so much for participating. And I'll start by asking, uh, what's the big news coming out of D.C. right now in terms of financial data? Sure thing. Thanks very much, Ian. Hi, everybody. I'm Hudson Hollister. I run the Data Transparency Coalition. Now, the Data Transparency Coalition is a nonprofit trade association and our job is to advocate open data. We seek to persuade governments to publish their information as machine readable, as standardized data, instead of as dis disconnected documents. We believe that open data will change government and society. Uh, we think that as governments choose to standardize and publish their information, uh, they'll bring about many benefits. Uh, they will improve democratic accountability. They will bring about new tools for their own management. They will automate compliance by making it possible to automatically report and cover compliance duties that used to be performed manually. I'm and sorry, Hudson. Sorry for interrupting you, Hudson, but all of a sudden you, there was a strange noise and your microphone cut out for a second. Uh, can you can you try again? Nope. Oh, we have no. We have lost audio. The uh, iPhone. It looks like earbuds have betrayed us. Uh, let's try that one more time. 
stuff. Still can't hear Hudson. All right. Uh, maybe jiggle the cord one more time. Let's try this out. Where? <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Thank, thankfully, we have Clint on the line because Clint is our technical expert on so many levels. I may defer to him in a second, embarrassingly. Uh, but let's try one more time. Maybe another unplug and a plug in. Hey, there you are. Hi there. I'm relying on my... Yeah, that's great. I've unplugged the headphones. I'm going uh, completely native. I'm relying on my six-year-old MacBook Pro. So as long as y'all can hear me, then I'm just going to continue, okay? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm not sure I like the going native phrase. Okay. Let's keep going. We'll, we'll come back to that hopefully in another webinar. Sure thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, um, I'll want me to go ahead and, and talk about what's happening in Washington? Yeah, let, let's go with that. That sounds great. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Our coalition is one of the private sector organizations that has been trying for the past two years to pass legislation called the Data Act, uh, the Digital Accountability and Transparency Act. Now, the Data Act on the federal level is a mandate to open up the federal government's spending. The Data Act requires the U.S. Treasury Department to set common government-wide data formats for all federal spending information and then publish the whole corpus online. Now, one of the reasons why we're really excited about the Data Act is it's part of a broader movement, the movement that we're all talking about here today. Governments are choosing to standardize their spending information to make it electronically searchable and to publish it online for everyone to scrutinize. The Data Act is just part of that. The Data Act is the, uh, is the U.S. federal government's choice to tackle all of its magnificently complex financial information and standardize it and publish it for everyone to see. The Data Act passed the U.S. Senate unanimously last Thursday. Now that's rare for legislation to receive the approval of every single senator in the chamber. Yeah, I can't expect. even remember the last time that happened. That, that's right. Uh, sometimes naming post offices gets unanimous approval, but it's pretty rare. So we're excited to see that, and I can dig into the specifics of the Data Act and other reasons why it might be relevant to all of you later on. Well, you know what? Honestly, part of me just wants to, to jump into a little bit of that right now. So what is the, if I'm, if I'm a, an agency leader, uh, we'll start in the federal market and the federal government, and then, then we'll broaden out the question. But you know, if, I, if I'm seeing this news, I think the classic question, uh, I can speak from some experience, and I've worked within federal agencies, you see this coming out of Capitol Hill, and you're asking yourself the question, what is it really going to happen? And if two, what does it mean for me? Am I going to have to change something? Is this, the, we used the joke, the, the classic question was, is it an unfunded mandate? Is this something that I need to go do? Am I going to get more resources to do yes. it? Or am I already working on this right now, and I don't, I don't necessarily need, need to do anything revolutionary, even if... Uh, the, the law is going to be passed. So these are the kind of questions I'd be asking. What should people expect? Uh, well, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what the, what the Data Act uh, actually requires. Um, it requires the U.S. Treasury Department uh, to set government-wide data standards for spending. Now, that's really important in the federal government, uh, and I, I'll bet it's important um, for many of our listeners who are uh, state, representing state and local governments as well. Because the federal government right now has nobody in charge of setting common data standards for its spending. Um, I'll give you an example. Nobody knows how many federal agencies there are. I used to work on Capitol Hill. I, I used to work for a member of Congress. And one time I asked the Congressional Research Service and the White House and the Government Accountability Office how many agencies we had, and I got three different answers. There's nobody in charge of something as basic as listing out the agencies. The related problem is we don't have a common identifier code, nothing electronic that identifies agencies. That means that the White House and Treasury and all of the other entities that work on federal spending track agencies differently. There's no way to segregate the transactions uh, or the account balances that relate to particular agencies because we don't have a government-wide identification code for agencies. If we don't have it for the agencies, and I think we have fewer than 200 agencies, not very many. If we don't have it for agencies, we surely don't have it for bureaus or federal programs 
or grants or contracts or accounts or grantees or contractors. The reason why we but don't I, have... What's, if I can chime in, what's the impact of that? You know, for example, if we don't know the number of agencies, does that mean that we don't know as a, as a nation? Like, do we just not understand how much money we spend as a, as a country? Is that, is, is that the follow-on from the standardization of how we name agencies? Question. Uh, we don't know the number of agencies. Uh, that means that basic financial management in the federal government is very difficult, and it means that accountability is nearly impossible. Uh, I'll explain both. Uh, there's no way for – when members of Congress try to decide how to vote on appropriations bills, they cannot be sure which accounts and which programs those appropriations will flow into. And then think about public accountability to citizens and taxpayers. I'm a taxpayer, but there is no way for me to figure out what all the federal funds are coming to my home district or my home precinct. Uh, there is no manner of bringing together the fragmented information about federal spending from different agencies, grants and contracts and salaries, different programs, different recipients. There's no way to see what is being spent on my hometown. Well, that, that, that feels huge. Uh, that, 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 that seems like a, a basic aspect of accounting and understanding that uh, should be unacceptable, and it sounds like it is. It's, it's almost a question of it's, it, how did this go on for so long since it is so common sense that, that you know, one of those classic questions, right? I mean, if this was a business and we had the same situation, uh, it wouldn't be tolerated. But at, That's right. at the federal government level, Obviously, with the complexity involved, it, it, it maybe is understandable how the situation is so bad, but it's still unacceptable. Is that right? I mean, is, that, is that the point here? Oh. Not sure. <laughs> Uh-oh. We lose audio, too? That's it. It's still there? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, yes, yes, sorry. Uh, well, um, I'll explain a little bit about what happens next. Uh, the Treasury Department uh, is required to set consistent data formats and apply those to all of the different areas of spending reporting throughout the federal government. Um, the Treasury Department has to set those common formats and then publish the whole structure of federal spending online. Um, that's going to be a challenge. Right now, the USAspending.gov website gives us a summary of each grant and a summary of each contract. Once the data standards are applied, the Treasury Department has to publish everything, not just grants and contracts, but internal spending as well. And our coalition is hoping that the Treasury Department will move to transaction by transaction, more granularity than we have now. Citizens will be able to use it. Agencies will be able to use it for their management. It should benefit everybody. Fantastic. Okay. So what is the impact that the Data Act has on state and local governments? Is, are there any connections there? Great question. Well, many state and local governments are... Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Please continue. Yeah. Uh, the state and local governments, many of, are, are many of whom are recipients of federal grants, uh, Federal grant reporting can be a hazard for state and local governments. Uh, a typical grant officer might be responsible for reporting to dozens of different agencies. Uh, oftentimes that information that must be reported comes from the same ERPs, it comes from the same systems, and yet there are separate fragmented reporting requirements to dozens of different agencies. If the Data Act is properly implemented and the government creates common formats for that reporting, We'll see a situation similar to what happened in the 90s when the IRS adopted common formats for individual tax returns. When the IRS did that in the 90s, it became possible for Intuit to build TurboTax. Right. I use TurboTax right, 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 right. to okay. I'm a little bit late in my taxes. Uh, I don't have to read the tax code because TurboTax asks me questions. The same kind of interface, the same kind of consolidated reporting will become possible for federal grantees, including state and local governments. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, yeah, well, I can see the opportunity there. Well, okay, so uh, lots of stuff to cover. Thank you so much for that context, Hudson. I'm going to turn it over now to see if there are any uh, questions 
uh, from our, our participants in this webinar. I see one already coming up. So uh, those of you that have not uh, uh, fired in the questions uh, yet, now is a great time. Please feel free to do so. Uh, Hudson, first question. What's the timing of the Data Act? Let's assume, well, I guess, is that what are the next steps for the Data Act to pass? And when it does become law, then what's, what's, the, what's the ramp? What's the timeline through which the agencies and the federal government is going to have to respond? Sorry, could you take that, uh, give me that question again? Here, I'll, I'll try to uh, translate yeah, it well, again. I there can you give you a few details, yeah. Um, well, for starters, uh, assuming that the law passes the House of Representatives, which we do expect, and is signed by President Obama, uh, which we also expect, uh, for that first year, uh, the first year after signature, uh, that's the time when Treasury and the White House have to figure out what the data standards should be. They have to uh, figure out what common identifiers need to be adopted across the government. Um, they need to design the data formats that must be used for all of these different areas of reporting. Um, a year after signature, Treasury and the White House issue guidance to all the agencies that says what those data standards are. After that, there is a period of another couple of years to allow the agencies to start using those data standards to collect information and to report information. The agencies might begin using those data standards to take in information from the grantees uh, that they disperse money to. The agencies will also start using the standards to report information upward to Treasury, to the White House, and to the other government-wide spending data systems. This is a multi-year process. It's going to take a long time, but the bottom line here is the federal government has made this choice to move from disconnected documents in its spending to open data. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, so it looks like we're getting other questions about the way applications and the actual technologies could work and, and all, how it all comes together. So that's probably a great transition point if I can to turn it over to Clint, uh, who can talk a bit about, a, uh, well, a, a leading approach. So uh, fantastic other side of the news, other side of the country, uh, Socrata released an open budget and an open spending uh, application. Uh, this provides a 360-degree view of a flow of public money, making it easier for governments to engage with citizens, as Hudson just described, and involve them in the process, uh, at, again, at, at all levels of government. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over to Clint in a second here. I'll, I'll just uh, team up to say that I'm particularly excited about Socrata's uh, open budget and open spending. I believe it, it's a very intuitive interface. It's got the search tools that I'm expecting. There's a multifaceted visualization that I really enjoy, and, and obviously the app is, is, custom, is optimized. Uh, to help citizens and staff get immediate access to all the financial information that is relevant in this way. And so when that is, is our framing, uh, Clint, uh, hope, I, don't, I don't know if I set expectations too high there, but I'll turn it over to you now to give a demonstration of how this stuff actually works. Fantastic. Thank you, Ian. Uh, hi, I'm Clint here from Rainy Seattle. I'm a product lead uh, working on the open budget and open spending applications. Um, you know, we've just talked a lot about sort of the form and function with which uh, financial data needs to make its way online. But here at Socrata, we've always believed that sort of the right visualization online, the right data online, uh, isn't really enough. You really have to give the context on data and really educate people on not the content of the data is, but what it means uh, as they interact with it uh, for it to be really truly meaningful and impactful. So I wanted to walk you through today um, you know, different levels of what I'm talking about to help you understand, uh, you know, what just, just what levels of achievement we can hit. So uh, here is a PDF. This is the federal government budget. This is not accessible to computers. Let's move on. This is a level better. Uh, we've got a bunch of different Excel files. And this is machine readable. I can drop it into my Excel program if I have one. And I can use it to figure out what the budget is. But I need to have known that this was here. And I need to know exactly what I'm looking for. Look at all these tables. I don't know what these mean. And I've been working on the budget stuff for a year now. So this is better, but it's very targeted. If you know exactly what you're looking for, you can get there. Let's move on. 
Here we're looking at a instance of the Socrata Open Data Portal, and I've just sort of dumped in a, uh, the operating budget of one of our customers. You can see here that there are 38,000 rows in this data set. I can interact with it here directly. I can share it. I can discuss it. Uh, and if I want to find out more about this, if I want to get this down to sort of a more digestible level, I can come here and I can find out how much was approved uh, for each year, for example. And here you can find out, hey, look, the debt service is pretty high, a lot of, a lot of money is spent on public safety, that sort of stuff. And this is a step better. The data is here. It's on a catalog. It's on the open data catalog that people would expect to go to to find this kind of information. And if I know what I'm looking for in the data, I can really easily find the answers I want. I don't have to download it into a separate program. I don't have to really mess with a lot. I get all the information. But I still have to what I'm doing with this data. If I'm looking at this original data set, and if I'm looking at all 40,000 rows, it's a little overwhelming for me as a citizen just coming in trying to understand what's happening here. So let's talk about what we could do next. Socrata really prides itself on being very API driven. Uh, we believe that the API is the way that we can really build services for the future and bridge the government to, to citizens and change the conversation that's driven by data. Here you can see a machine friendly output format. Uh, this is JSON, the standard across the web. And the budget data set you were just looking at. Except now uh, we're looking at it in a way that a developer would want it. It's all structured into these records that people can use. And if I'm a developer and I want, instead of looking at environment, to look at transportation, I can do it very easily, and it comes right up. So you can already imagine building, as a developer, different applications that leverage this data. And I can point it at different uh, Socrata open data portals as long as they have the same data schema and expect them to work. And as customers update data, if I have a new year's worth of budget information coming online, a developer doesn't have to come through and update their application in order for it to work. It just works. So you can already imagine building fantastic visualizations like, say, this New York Times visualization that came out last year uh, about the federal government's budget. Um, and that is a step better. But like I said, we believe that building the right visualization isn't necessarily enough. Uh, we think we really have to tell a story around data. As Ian mentioned, uh, the budget is a very interesting uh, proxy for looking at what's important and what's a priority for the government. And part of making that statement ring true is helping people understand what it is that's in the budget. Uh, we also have the open spending application. Today, for the sake of time, uh, we're not going to go through it. But I'm excited to show you Socrata Open Budget. So here it, here it is with some sample data. You can see we are looking at the county of New Alexandria. And you can see here that we've already taken one of the difficult concepts around budget and budget management and broken it out for the user. So if I'm a citizen coming in and I don't know what the difference between an operating and a budget, uh, capital budget is, it's already broken out. I can see that the operating budget keeps uh, the county's ongoing programs running, whereas the capital budget goes towards one-time infrastructure and improvement projects. I already know what I'm getting into with this application, and it's helping me learn about how the budget works. You can also see that we've put a map here. We believe that maps are one of the best ways for people to engage with data. They, people always want to know what's going on around them. So if I live up here near this bubble over here, I can see there's a fire station being built. I didn't know it. I can come right away, and I can see some information about that fire station. Here it is. It's in preliminary design. That's probably why I don't know about it, is that it's not being built yet. I have some information about that project, and I can get a lot of context about the budget for that project. Here you can see the Clarksburg Fire Station is allocated for $26 million, which is 0.59% of the total capital budget. We think it's really important to always help people situate themselves on the grand scale of things and let people know, uh, understand what they're looking at. So here you can see this little bit is the Clarksburg Fire Station, and it looks like it's maybe a quarter of the Fire and Rescue Service budget, which then, again, is a good portion of the public safety budget. But compared to the total capital budget, peanuts. If we go back to a home page, let's look at sort of a more guided tour into the data. That 38,000 rows was very overwhelming. And one of our goals is to take those 38,000 rows and present them to the user in a way that they can get to what they're looking for and using terms that they understand. Let's try to figure out why uh, public safety was so small and look at what was so big. Here we can see in the capital budget, here's the transportation 
uh, budget. And as I drill into this application, you can see that we've sort of built this metaphor where we're literally drilling in. And at each level, I understand what these things mean. There's a specificity here that increases with time. I know what transportation is. And inside of transportation, I know what mass transit is. So let's take a look at that. And you can see that as we're going down, we get that same context over time to help people understand just what they're looking at. But what if I have more questions? What if I want to know about uh, what are all the projects here? What if I want to see a map again? I can get that. Or if, what if I want to understand uh, how the money came, uh, came to be that it was allocated for transportation? This ties to fund sources. But citizens don't really know what fund sources mean. So rather than have a tab that says view fund sources, we phrase the questions that citizens might have in terms of uh, the, well, the questions they might have. So here you can see we're looking at what's it for right now. If I want to know where the money came from, here it is. It's where is it from. And here are the fund sources. Uh, I can see here are the stacks. And most of the money for transportation came from local sources. That kind of makes sense. I can also see that geo bonds right here are pretty much the biggest contributor of money to transportation. Here is an example of where we've taken great care with the types of visualizations we choose to use and how they teach the user about what they're looking at. Uh, the best visualization for this particular piece of data would actually be a, a rectangular hierarchical diagram. It's not area-based, it's not circular, it's a better pure data visual. The goal isn't just to visualize the data in the best way, it's actually to understand things in the best way. We've chosen to use these circles and these arrows to help give the, the user a sense of the flow of money over time to the total. If I want to explore things in a different way, I can resort these bars, or I can change uh, to, to look at, you know, show me the top non-local sources. So you can see that Bridges seems to have, seem to have gotten the most funding from non-local sources. And once again, I can drill into where is it from, and I can find out that it seems like federal aid was a big contributor to that. There's a lot more here. There's just one last thing I'd like to show you, which is this district map. And let me go up so there's some more data here to look at. Um, this district map, which shows uh, what's going on around me in, in other terms I understand. I know that I elect my council person to the, to the district, uh, to the council board, and I would like to know, you know just how well they're doing at getting my district money. Here you can see that maybe if I live in District 3, I'm not so happy with how the transportation is going in my uh, district in the county. So that's just a quick look at a number of the different ways that we've carefully chosen how to teach people not just what is in the budget, but how it works. Uh, and we, we're really excited about open budget. We think open spending is going to be even better. There's uh, all this granular data that you start getting with, uh, with spending data, as Hudson was talking about, getting down to the transaction level, really gives you really cool insight into what's going on on a monthly basis, or even more granular than that, uh, with your government organizations. Uh, so with that, Ian, if there are any questions or uh, conclusions to draw. Yeah, no, Clint, thank you for that. that, that I, I'm, I have a bit of a wow. Uh, just every time I see this, this demonstration, I get excited about it. Uh, I got to say, personally, the, there's something curiously emotional that takes place when you see where money is spent by geography. There's always a bit of like, where I, I immediately put myself on that map and try to figure out you know, where the money is going. Uh, and and the, the frustration, having worked with uh, government budgets before, of trying to drill in and the impossibility to be able to do that. Like, so, again, uh, fantastic work, uh, big fan. We only have a few minutes left, um, so I'm going to turn it over to, well, I'm not going to turn it over, I'm going to ask Alita any other questions from our, our users would love to, to fire them at me. Uh, one of the questions that I see coming in through our, our internal chat bar here is where is this already taking place? Um, it sounds like we're having uh, some uh, audio problems with Hudson, who may or may not be, uh, oh, there, we have Hudson back. I don't know if he was being attacked from the side there, but because we lost his audio, I'll just briefly say a lot of examples of this happening nationwide, at the city uh, and state level, that in many ways is leading to the federal government as an inspiration for what's possible, uh, you know, even from just a policy perspective, you know, New York, Boston, Los Angeles, Montgomery County, uh, all examples of, of governments that are already taking a lead in, in this regard in terms of making financial information uh, available to people in this way. I'll, I'll, I'll turn back to Alita. Uh, anything else? I'm looking at my chat bar here. Any other questions coming in from folks? Uh, well, I'm getting it instead. Oh, I lost Hudson. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say we're about out of time. Well, Hudson apparently got kicked out of his room exactly at 11.30. Oh, he's, oh, he's back, and we had a picture of Hudson what looks like three years ago. I don't know if that picture 
of Hudson uh, is a recently taken picture, the one that flashed up in his uh, biography. But I'll close by saying uh, thank you to uh, Hudson Hollister, the executive director of the Data Transparency Coalition. Uh, thank you as well to Clint Sang, the uh, product lead, a product lead for Socrata, and obviously uh, the brains behind open budget and open spending. Uh, I, my name is Ian Kalin. Uh, on behalf of Socrata, thank you so much for joining in this webinar and firing in your questions. Looking to the future, there's a few ways for you to get involved. Uh, and I'm going to look at my cheat sheets here to make sure I don't miss the actual information. On April 29th, the Data Transparency Coalition is hosting a summit, a transparency summit, specifically talking about the revolutionary transformation of sp uh, federal spending. Uh, for those of you that are interested, you can check out the webcast at datasummit.org. Uh, additionally, we also have a, uh, our next Socrata Financial Transparency webinar taking place on May 15th, looking at my sheet to make sure I didn't get that date wrong, and it will feature some of the innovations uh, from Montgomery County. For those of you that want more information about these upcoming events, please check out the Socratic blog. Thank you again so much for participating, and we look forward to you all joining at the next event.